Hey y'all, just wanted to step in and uh, give you a heads up before we get started. This episode is recorded through Discord. Uh, this is a program that you can get on your computer and an application you can get on your phone that lets you talk to friends from all over the world. Uh, we current, This is our call-in episode kind of thing, so we have uh, somebody coming in from Kentucky, somebody coming in from Washington, and then we have somebody coming in from uh, one town over in California. So the audio will be quite different. You'll notice that even my audio is different. I'm using a new dynamic mic that we're still uh, setting up and working out all the little bugs to it. So I just wanted to give you that warning that this is going to be quite a bit of a different episode. It's why it's a bonus one. And I hope you guys enjoy the show. Bye. Hey, all. Welcome to Top 5. This is a special bonus episode. We're doing this one about World of Warcraft bosses. Uh, we're, la- we're launching this one on Tuesday. Normal episodes are on Monday. And you got one yesterday, which is our top... 2000s comedy movies. Uh, today is a, spo- a special one because Battle for Azeroth just released. So we figure everybody's going to be on their computers playing 10, 12 hours straight. It'd be good to have something to listen to the background. Well, that's us. Yeah. yeah. So um, with us, we have some special guests. We have somebody you've heard a million times. That's to grow. What's up, friends? <laughs> there he is. Uh, we also have uh, Tabby. Hi. <laughs> that's Tabby. <laughs> and then we have Derek. How's it going, everybody? There's Derek. Uh, So what we're going to do first is explain, uh, this is all about World of Warcraft, and so for our normal listeners who are here for comic book stuff and movies and TV shows and like broadside video games, this is going to sound way more detailed than you've ever heard before because these are games, this is a game that we're very passionate about, and so we'll be throwing out acronyms, we'll be throwing out names like Agrimar and stuff like that, and you'll be totally confused. So if you like to just hear us talk, well then welcome and we hope you enjoy the show. But if you're not familiar with this content or this with this topic, that's totally fine and we understand you're not listening. But we just wanted to give that warning now because if I have to sit here and explain what a tank is the whole time, this will be an eight-hour episode and we're, we're really not shooting for that. The other announcements I want to make is BlizzCon tickets. Tabby actually brought this to my uh, uh, attention. BlizzCon tickets are going to be sold on the 18th again. August 18th is the third chance and last chance to get your BlizzCon tickets. Uh, 10 o'clock in the morning uh, Pacific Standard Time. And then also we have two new shirts in our store. So if you guys want to check those out, uh, one of them is the Squeaks shirt that we've been talking about. And the other one is uh, just a new top five shirt uh, that has just the words by themselves. Already ordered one of those. Um, anything else? Uh, you guys, any geek news we have to throw out there real quick while we're thinking? Question. Why would Probably. you tell everybody about World of Warcraft tickets when we want to get some, Taff? Come on, man. We're never going to get some. Because I'm a scrub. So you should have bought them the first two times. Come on. I couldn't. I had to work. We tried. Hours, lying on tap. We tried so hard. Me and Squeaks were Bail. super ready for it, and just. Bail. I know. I failed you. Now I got to be standing out on a corner and getting your tickets the hard way. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Am I just gonna have to try for you this time. <laughs> Hold on. Uh, what was that, Tabby? You first. Oh, I said, am I gonna have to try this weekend for you? Uh, yeah, if you uh, want to, that would be fantastic. I'll throw you. I told him I won't go unless I get a ticket. Because I'm not going to be hooking on the side for a ticket. It's so easy to hook on the side. I did. Derek saw it. It was fine. I had to meet yeah, some strange guy on Craigslist. It was crazy. I was saying, though, you might be Brian for the rest of the weekend. <laughs> oh. I want to be Daniel. And no, but. Me off, guys. So, just a real quick reference. That was such a good one. Is uh, I was able to get my name on my badge and I bought it at the door, but a friend of ours was not. So, his name, who was Dalton. Hi, Dalton, if you listen. Uh, his name was Brian the whole weekend. It was fantastic. So yeah, yeah that was good times and uh, looking forward to, to going again this year. Quick rundown of World of Warcraft. This game has been a huge part of all of our lives. Uh, we've actually met people we've never met before over this video game and then have gone down to LA and to a big convention. Derek lives all the way in Kentucky and flew over for this convention just to hang out with each other and experience the game together. It's so much more than a video game. It's really a community builder. So we're really passionate about it and we have fond memories. A lot of these bosses, I made my own list. I'll be the judge this round, but I made my own list. And during making my list, and I think it might be the same for you guys, a lot of the times I was making a list, I was like, it's because I remember what it felt like to do that boss with the guild. You know what I'm saying? Is that the same thing for you yeah. guys? Yeah. Pretty much my yeah, whole totally. entire list are like that. Yeah. Like you're going to be laughing when I, I tell you about <laughs> I have a feeling. I already know what it's going to be. It's going to well, be oh, one through five breakfast four. Oh yeah, no oh, bracket spore. That was a good fight. That was a good fight. No bracket spore. None of you people could heal the mushrooms, right? You're not allowed to put that on the list. That's just no, not fair. I, I was too wait, million I'm damage. Out, I'm out. Range DPS. I was the one that, that was told you fault. guys. I told you guys about healing the mushrooms. You guys were like, "No, you're not supposed to. They heal the entire raid. Why would you do that?" And then I was right. 
So this entire time we could have done them sooner if we just all just listened to Tagura. We could have believed you until you said you were right. Then all of a sudden we're like, nope, bullshit, that never happened. That's <laughs> impossible. <laughs> All right, so we're going to start things off with uh, you guys go ahead and going through your top five real fast in no particular order. Daniel, you've done this a hundred times. Why don't you go ahead and tell us what's your top five? All right. Uh, Lich King. Okay. Loot Ship. Loot Ship, okay, from ICC, okay. Hans and Franz. Love it, yep. Uh, Yogg Saron. Oh, okay. And uh, Ranger Scale. Yeah, all of those are from Wrath of, Wrath of Lunch King. Okay. Hans and Franz is not from Wrath of Lich King. Oh, you're Kata. right. You're right. Good, good call. Good call. You're right. Not from Kata, but from Warlords of Draenor. Wait. Oh, Warlords. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Blackrock Foundry. All right. Uh, we'll go, Derek, go ahead and go through your five. Uh, my five would be Lich King, Yogg-Saron, Garrosh, Illidan, and Classic Ragnaros. Classic Ragnaros over the Fire Firelands one? Definitely, yeah. Wow, I would have gone the other way about that. Uh, all right, Tabby, what do we got for your five? All right, well, I have Lich King as well. Mm -hmm. um, Garrosh, Kill Jaden, both flavors. Uh, Nefarian, both flavors. And Malagos. <laughs> we need one flavor for each of those, but that's good for now. All right, so, all right, Tagoro, go ahead and name your number one. Uh, oh, name my number one. It's going to be Lich King. Okay, and defend it. Why is it? Why does it deserve to be number one? I want to hear some backstory. Uh, I want to hear some mechanics. Go for it. Well, forget the backstory. My whole whole entire list is just from our friends. Okay, yeah, totally. We made. Yeah, that, that's community is what WoW's about, so go for it. You yeah, still get the minute. struggles through ICC. And the reason I picked Lich King is just because he's the main main dude. And the only reason I play this game is because of Lich King. You really find him as the, the sole reason you play yeah. World of oh, Warcraft yeah, is because of Lich King's definitely. Uh, I, presence? I, I'm waiting for the next expansion to be about Lich King again. Not, mm -hmm. well, the Bolvar expansion. It's Bolvar, but... Uh, you just want Arthas know. back. I want Arthas back. Okay, so... But, so, you're uh, saying it's about the community. What about the community during that fight? What was it about? What happened? Going through wipes after wipes, even though, like, we were really a bad guild. We were, we fair knew, enough. And we knew it, but we still kept on, and we were still able to get him down. He was actually easier than everything, every other boss in the raid. He was, well, no, I wouldn't say that. He was definitely easier than my number two on my list, but, uh, which was no. also from that raid. <laughs> but He uh, was only easy because you had a good disc priest on your raid. Fair enough. The classic Bendita, which is Tabby's in-game uh, in name for us, guys. So, uh, real quick, I want to throw in on, the, on Lich King. It, when he says it took a lot of wipes... It was two and a half months for us to take down Lich King. So that shows the dedication on our team side. Uh, going in there, we did twice a week back then. And just, just wailing on him until he finally died. The day he died, I was working on Team 2. I was running Team 2 as the Druid healer just because they didn't have their healer that day. So oh, yeah. I just got blasted. <laughs> yeah, so um, that was a lot of fun. And then let's go into... All right, Benita, let's hear your number one. Tabby, go ahead and hear your number one. Uh, well, I'm going to pick Malagos because I really like the mechanic. You know, you're fighting a dragon, regular tank and spank, and then all of a sudden you're on flying discs, and then you're riding a dragon at the end. And then I feel like there's a bunch of implications because of his death, because now, like, the arcane energies are rampaging around the world, and the focusing iris has been a plot point for, like, two different events. Uh, we used it to nuke Theramore if you play Horde, and uh, we also used it to kill uh, Deathwing, so I felt like his death was very impactful in a lot of things in the game that people don't realize. That is so, so true. Malagos. <laughs> I never really thought about how impactful Malagos has been. Yeah, okay, that, I mean, the Deathwing, that's a classic scene right there. I remember very well that cutscene where Thrall's holding, holding the Iris and shooting down Deathwing, or shooting Deathwing. It's the Dragon Soul, but we had to go get the the focusing Iris to try to create it, because then the okay. aspects gave their powers up. Yeah. Because that's why we had to fight the lightning orc. That shows how much I paid attention in Cataclysm. That was such a drag of an expansion for me, but... <laughs> well, it was because it was the first LFR raid, and you were too busy trying to not kill yourself with how bad people were playing. True. Very, very true. All right, so that's a good one. Derek, what do you got for your number one? And you can uh, repeat. My number one would definitely uh, to not repeat because I don't want to 
do the same one as someone else. You can um, if you want to. That's fine. Nah, I'm good. I'll pick Yogg-Saron. Yogg-Saron? Because I feel like he was the ending to a raid that changed WoW forever. I feel like Olduwar was very, very impactful on the game because it introduced a lot of new mechanics and new styles that they still use today that was very ahead of its time. And um, the fact that he was one of the longer standing um, bosses to get killed for his hard mode with zero lights um, and for him to bring in class stacking and a lot of tuning patches and a lot of things that bosses previous to him didn't see and that bosses today are taking notes from. All right, that was that was a good argument right there, Yogg-Saron. And one of my favorite parts about Yogg-Saron was the almost like in-game cutscenes, but but it's old school where you actually went into like the library and stuff like that, and you saw something play out while you're still fighting. But so you got a little bit of lore while in the middle of the fight. It was pretty cool. One of our big pluses to the way you guys each had your number ones was one of you guys had it from the community, one of you guys had it because of the lore, and one of you guys had it because of the mechanics and how it changed the mechanics for the future great part about wow is that it has all these different facets to it and, and you guys just did an excellent job explaining three of them all right so i'm giving i got the five minutes timer i'm tossing that over uh and i don't think i'll need the, t- the five minutes all the way through for this i think to me i think it's got to be between yogg and the lich king and the reason i'm saying those two is they both felt like true end game type bosses you had the lich king that really all the warcraft story led up to him and and everything like that and i think that his mechanics it was a really good check to everything that's typically in a raid today yogg introduced yeah. so many new mechanics so it's a tough one uh anything else that real quick yeah go ahead. Uh, i didn't finish actually talking about lich king but you, yeah you uh, were way past your minute but yeah this is the time uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, well you yeah. kind of got into it anyways uh i love uh once you actually defeat him the whole cutscene, and it's like the whole father Oh, yeah, is it over? That was just amazing, and I still have to watch that every like every year. It's, I still watch yeah, it. Yeah, you wouldn't if you farmed Invincible. You wouldn't need to watch that. <laughs> uh, actually, you know what? I was farming him, and I gave up. <laughs> so I gave you, up. You told him, I guess. <laughs> what the hell? Um, but Yogg-Saron's the only boss in the game where you can kiss and make up. What do you mean? You kiss Yogg-Saron? Is this something new that I didn't That's have been doing? That's an achievement. You slash kiss uh, his uh, girl form, and it's an achievement. Like, kiss and make up. Do you not know? I even know that. I am literally writing this down right now. Kiss Yog chick I did not know you could you, do that. <laughs> you didn't know that? No, but it is something I that we've done today. I don't know that either. That is awesome. <laughs> um, all right, so... Yeah, the, uh, the the cinematic, it's funny you brought that up to Gro, uh, or Daniel. Um, it is obviously a huge fan favorite. There's a statue in the middle of old Dalaran to it. Yeah. And uh, Joe, who's typically on the on the podcast, he was going to join us today as well. Uh, he says he couldn't join us, but the one thing he wanted to make sure was brought up was that cutscene in the Death of Fletch King. So I think I'm going to lay down the verdict on this one. I think we have to go with, and I'll enter in the sound effects for I wanna, this. I want to give <laughs> one more... All right. More argument for Yogg-Saron. I'm flipping the 30 Lich second King, timer. Go for it. Lich King, the entire expansion was nothing but a Scooby-Doo villain saying, oh, I'll get you next time, kitties. And then he'd run away. Yogg-Saron is down there making people insane. And for all we know, he might still be alive. And he he's is very his alive. Oh, that Arthas is pretty dead. You know, he's not coming back. Bolvar shall come back, but not Arthas. I'm sorry. He is dead as a doornail, and Yogg-Saron is alive and well. My knife who told me so. <laughs> so here's my argument to that. Lich King is... <laughs> and she linked in, in the kiss and makeup achievement. Thank you. Lich King, I feel like, is still alive, because he was, he was alive before Arthas, and he's alive afterwards. And Bolvar is currently playing a role in our storyline now. I think Yogg maybe as well. I think we have a couple other old gods that may be playing their parts in here. Somebody has to be controlling Sylvanas. I know she's undead, but my god, so she's making such terrible decisions right now. So I don't know. Nazoth. <laughs> the subtle Nazoth shout out. I still gotta say this is, has to go to Lich King for me. I think a lot of it is community. This was the culmination of so much effort for Death Alliance, our old guild. 
Uh, it was a huge effort for us. And the friends that I made during that raid, which culminated in that last boss, I have to this day. And so we've been friends for, I want to say, 10 years, right, Tabby? But Eight, I only joined nine? your guild because we wiped on Loot Ship and you were adorable. <laughs> okay. Is Loot Ship in your top five? Uh, it's in... Don't, actually, it's in uh, Taguro, so it will be brought up. But yeah, Taguro knew that that would be brought up during this fight. So we'll right, explain definitely. it later on. Definitely. All right, so I'm putting Lich King as our number one. And I think that's, I think it's, I'm going off of just your guys' arguments in the community. I had explained why that's so important to me in World of Warcraft. And that's what and Taguro brought in the community for this one, too. So, Well, if it wasn't for Yaxaron, I would have never joined your guild. Because it made you insane? Really? Yeah, because we were wiping on Yogg-Saron, and I wanted to play my priest at that time, but they wouldn't oh, let me. They wanted yeah. me on my shaman, and the other priest healer kept touching clouds on Yogg-Saron, no light, and so we couldn't <laughs> pass first base, so I raged quit, and then I decided to join a pug for loot ship, and that's how I met <laughs> you. So yogg is very important. How many wipes did we have on loot ship that night? I, I forgot. Possibly I 40? <laughs> no, I don't think... Did we down them? We did down it on the second day. You left your other guild because the healer was struggling on zero lights and joined a guild where they couldn't kill loot ship. <laughs> it, but... was, it was transferring over to the other ship was hard to master, okay? <laughs> it wasn't even us. No. It, was like, it was the pugs that we got into the guild. We were a brand new guild. They were all pugs. Yeah. It, Just... like it might have been tough, though. It was, and I was a terrible raid leader. I was very new to everything raid leader stuff, so it was it was rough. So uh, you thought I was a DPS at the end of the night. <laughs> I did tell Bendita, this priest that was healing, "Hey, nice DPS," and uh, yeah, that was that was pretty rough. It was supposed to be a one time thing. Krinka said you had a paladin healer, and I was like, "Okay, I'll fill in as a disc priest," and. That didn't work out. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So before we go into that that hole of despair that was the loot ship, uh, we're gonna go to our number twos. You guys can bring up what you th what your number one was if you want to bring back Yog or, or Malagos, and then we'll go over what should be our number two. So we'll start again with Daniel. Daniel, your number two. All right. My number two is uh, Hans and Franz. Okay, and from Blackrock Foundry. Yeah, it's Hansel and Franzic, but yeah, it's Hans and Franz. Yeah, it's from. Uh... Blackrock Foundry. Yeah. No, I was talking about. It. Didn't they make it from like, like some show? Oh yeah, from like Saturday Night Live. Yeah, they're from Saturday Night Live. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, so All I'm right. gonna I'm gonna flip over the minute timer. You have to explain why that fight deserves to be that boss deserves to be number two on the list. Go for All it. Right. All right. Well, the reason I put it on my list is uh, it's a different fight than everything else. It's like more of of a fun fight. Like you have the the moving platform and you have to like dodge all the like the the plates that come down from the ceiling and then the lava it's just a fun fight like it's kind of like just free loot just like free chip pretty much free loot it took us it took us about two weeks to get that boss down too struggled <laughs> it, was it, it might be that we're just a bad guild could that be the case i mean it sounds crazy um, no it, it could be <laughs> this unique strip we did a guild that was a guild run. Guild? Nope, that was a guild run. I remember very well because I wanted us to go straight to heroic because I said if you guys can master the mechanics, it doesn't matter what your gear's in. And you guys, Apparently, people couldn't. Nah, no, I was fine. I, was I, fine. I, I remember running to the back of the ship and um, walking to the other ship because you could walk over without using the jetpack. So I could, so we could still get the achievement, but I could go over and heal the other side. Oh god, loot ship again, <laughs> killing me with that loot ship. All right, so all right, that was your argument for Hans and Franz, and then let's go. <laughs> yeah, it was uh, Tabby? Go ahead and tell us your number two. I'm still going with Malagos. Malagos. If you've seen the recent achievement with Jaina's power, she's only gotten that power because of the residue from the Theramore bomb, which is linked to the focusing iris again. Malagos is a big player. Is there anything else and you I... want to throw in there for Malagos's defense? You have a minute timer if you need to use well, it. All. I I, I want to argue against Hans and Franz, and I say I, I discredit anything from Warlords of Drenor because that's an alternate timeline and it doesn't matter. All right, we will we will do the we'll, we will have you two debate each other at the five minute mark, at the five minute timer. But that was that I do want to hear that because personally I do like Hans and Franz mechanics, but they're a one and done boss. They're not they don't have yeah, any effect yeah. on the on the yeah, lore. So I got that it's just personal. Yeah. All right, and Derek, let's hear your number your number two. 
Uh, I fully agree with the number one. I think it should be the Lich King because that would have been my number one. Okay, I just didn't so, want to duplicate. Nice. <laughs> yeah. So second would have to be Yogg. Okay. All right. I feel like he he's just he's changed the game in such a meaningful way that we wouldn't have half of the stuff that we have if it wasn't for that raid. Yeah. And him being as difficult as he was. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and go into the judging phase here, and what I'm gonna have you guys do is we'll start with we'll start with Tabby. Tabby, go ahead and explain why Malagos is better than Hans and Franz and Yogg-Saron. Well, for one, you get to ride a dragon. Who doesn't want to ride a dragon in combat and take out a bigger dragon? <laughs> My okay, hold on. My counter to that is Oculus. Nobody wants to ride a dragon ever again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we are, if that okay. isn't the truth, please no. <laughs> we are done with those. That is... Especially if you've done it in pre-patch when it was broken and the little whelps were dealing mm-hmm. your full HP pull in one hit. <laughs> okay, I'm not talking about Oculus. I'm talking about... I know, I know. Eternity. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, I... Oh, man, I never want to see in-flight combat again because of that. <laughs> but um, what else do you want to say about Malagos? I did, like, didn't it drop frost gear that you had to use for Naxxramas? Uh, I... No, because resistance didn't last very long, but there was some. But it was just your your one and done dragon boss. It, I thought overall it was great mechanics, flying on the disc, running around controlling uh, damage to the raid in the protective shields. I over, overall really enjoyed the fight, and it's changed because that was the first dragon aspect that we killed. And it was huge because the ley lines were going out of control, and... Magic is running rampant in the world. Oh, this is a tough one. See, uh, you guys are both using your second one, so this is the last time they can be argued. Malagos is an important fight, and I'm just now, as I'm thinking back to that fight, it's been so long since I've done it. It, it, it was great. I love that first phase where you're having to move the entire raid underneath the bubbles. It felt really cool. I think I remember most playing that one as a DK, because I think I was tanking as a DK for the first time. That was a really good one. All right, so let's see. Uh, let's hear Yogg-Saron better than Hans and Franz and Malagos. Go for it, Derek. It doesn't take any explaining to know why it's better than Hans and Franz. That one <laughs> even, that's not even good. But it came from the girl, so it's expected. Uh, <laughs> the smack talking begins. God damn, all right. What the fuck? You should have just picked Hogger. It would have standed a better chance against these guys. Than a pop culture reference from the worst expansion that has ever been manufactured from Blizzard headquarters. Yogg, however, is, in my opinion, better than Malagos because Malagos had aspects after its fight that led to where we are now. But its fight itself wasn't a very big deal. There wasn't anything new really that happened except for the flying on the dragons but we had shields and I mean you just fought a dragon um, we uh, I just think that Yogg and his ability to have the assistance from the keepers and getting outside assistance and being able to choose how much help you want or none at all and then the fight itself being extremely difficult I feel like Yogg is just a much better choice for second Okay. That's a good argument right there. Um, and let's hear from Hans and Franz why it beats I just don't. <laughs> a, like, a dragon Hans aspect and an Franz. old god. Uh, like I said, just preference. I really yeah. like that fight. Uh, it was amazing. It was fun. So a lot more fun than, like, dog. Like, it was just a, a fun fight. That's the only reason why I picked it. And Hans? they actually, yeah. like, Turgo uh, got set, you know, and feel it now. He got sacked. <laughs> so the the good thing about Hans and Franz, it actually made number five on my list to grow. And I really loved Hans and Franz because it had unique mechanics that I hadn't seen, at least in a long time. And I loved the ability where you had to have one tank was getting thrown at the other tank. And at that time, I was our main tank. So I really loved that mechanic. I remember very well having to explain that fight. You remember our off tank, who actually is a member of this podcast, had to be explained with a pop cooldowns. So it was really fun doing that. Um during that fight. So it was a cool fight, but I don't feel like it beats these two. So I'm going to go ahead and have it between Yogg's and Malagos. And in my book, Malagos was a really fun fight that had things that are pretty memorable to me. 
Um, and lore wise has impacted the game a great deal, but I think Yogg Run has impacted even more because he's an old god that may still be active to this day. Uh, his mechanics are still used in different forms today. It's influenced our mechanics a great deal. Uh, we haven't seen the, the main thing with the Malagos fight was flying on dragons. We haven't seen that since. Um, so I think, I think I have to give this one to Yogg's around. So we're going number two is Yogg's. He should have been number one, just the same. No, nope. no way. Yeah, yeah. Not over, not over yeah. Arthas. <laughs> Arthas was the the completion of the Warcraft story. Like if they do a HBO World of Warcraft show, it'll end with the defeat of Arthas, in my opinion. Because hopefully, because after that, it's just a dragon that burns everything up, and nobody understands why. Yeah, if they skip Cataclysm, we can just. Give like a 10 second preface as to why everything's burnt and then go on about our business. Maybe an extra 15 seconds to explain there's walking pandas now. And then get just get to Legion. Just go right to Legion as fast as you can. The shahs are very important. They're old gods too. That's true. Oh well, yeah. Okay, yeah. And I did like their the way they showed them. It was pretty cool. Just don't show the um, 15 dailies you gotta do every day. We don't <laughs> want to Could you imagine that on a show? Somebody going out there and like killing bugs. Same thing. Over and over, every day. Next week, come back for Golden Lotus. Yeah, I'm out there right now doing archaeology, so I'm, I'm very tired of that place again. Okay, so we have our number three, and this time we're going to start with Tabby. Tabby, what is your number three? It can't be Malagos. You used it twice, so it has to be somebody new. I know. I'm, I'm trying to decide if I'm <laughs> going to argue uh, Garrosh or I'm going to argue Nefarion, but I think I'm going to argue Nefarion. And if I argue his vanilla fight, I think it's like the first vanilla fight that really had the phases where you had the first phase with the ads coming in and then his dragon phase and i love that his dragon phase had something specific for every single class they even added something for demon hunters he makes your screen go black <laughs> and you have to use spectral sight to see the fight um and then in cataclysm he gave us the best title in the game even though it was temporary <laughs> the slayer of the stupid incompetent and disappointing minions <laughs> Oh, I did not know about this title. <laughs> After you kill one of the other bosses, he gives you that for the duration of the dungeon. But he was big on the lore. He's over there trying to manipulate everything with his sister, Anixia. So he was both mechanics and lore for me, so I'm going to say Nefarian. Is he the first boss with mecha- with phases? I didn't remember that. That's Oh, he because he, he, cause all the other ones were kind of like, they all had like phases, like Anixia had phases, but this is like more traditional where kind of like uh, Kel'Thuzad, where there's like that eight ad phase at the beginning of the boss fight, and then it switched over to the dragon mechanic of the raid, yeah, and then it had special of, mechanics. Yeah. Yeah, instead of it just being like, oh, well, he's going to do this now. Yeah. That kind of phase, it's like you get another part of a fight. Like you get a whole new thing introduced. That's a big thing right there because I like when there's an innovation made in the game from their fights. And like that's – that. so far everybody on our list so far has made big innovations to the game. And you can see their design put into future games. Phases, I mean, that's – Argus has a hundred of them, feels like. So, yeah, that's – okay, that's good. Uh, all right, so Derek, let's go with your number two. Number three, you mean? Number three, yeah. Sorry, number three. Um, my number three would probably be Garrosh. Um, just for the plain fact that I didn't play in vanilla, really, and, or BC. I started in Lich King. Oh, okay. Um, and Garrosh was probably one of the first end bosses I got to experience um, while they weren't nerfed to death or you didn't have a buff or anything. Um, I didn't kill him during this time, sadly enough. But um, the fact that it meant a lot to me about Garrosh's story, and I enjoyed going through Pandaria and learning what was going on with him, because he didn't bother me personally. I actually liked his story a lot. But um, that and just the the community and finally getting into like more hardcore raiding, it took me into a step to where I was able to you know, form the guild that we have today. Yeah. It was really nice. Yeah, I like that. I like that idea of it, that that, that boss meant so much to you because it was the first boss, is the first boss that like united you into like, this is the level of rating I want to be at and I want to progress more and more. So that's pretty cool. And uh, for those of you listening, uh, Derek is the guild founder and guild leader, basically, of Ex Nihilum from Ticondrus. 
and uh, and so and that's actually my guild. So if you ever want to find us, I'm I'm Taff. I know you've heard in the background. Um, so yeah, so and he's uh, Twink Mac. If you ever want to find him, so we're always out there. And we're probably recruiting a healer or something right now. I'm sure we'll let you we're know. Recruiting everything right now. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, recruiting. Be a, uh, Battle for Azeroth. As we're recording, this is a little less than half, a little less than a week away. So we're we're actively searching. All right, Taguro, what do we got for your number three? Uh, my number three is Razor Scale. From, oh, okay. Uh, Uldor. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I picked her because for a very long time. I needed the achievement to get my mount from her. <laughs> so you just farmed her forever? Well, you, well, you need to take off all your gear because you're way over level for this mount. Okay? Yeah, so Medina had to help me because I didn't know how to do it. And every time I... Oh my god. <laughs> uh, do, we do it. Like, we ever... Like, every time we did like, Old War, we would always skip Razor Scale, so I would never get the goddamn achievement. And, well, you can't do it without taking your gear off, too, so I didn't help. And uh, I just like to fight because uh, you have to fight the minions and then harpoon her down and then yeah. fight her. And it's just a cool little mechanic, like uh, and just her um, just her model, it's pretty cool. She's like plated and <clears throat> to me, yeah. to me, that's the big plus to Razor Scale is she. So Razor, uh, so Proto Drakes were new in Wrath of the Lich King, and she had that that armor plating that was like dwarven metal on her. Uh, or uh, uh, you know, a Titan metal on her almost, and it actually was it was that model that you had gotten a version of for the achievement, both twenty five and ten man, two different colorings of that model. So, um, I need uh, Benita you know. help me with the twenty five man. Version. Yeah, <laughs> you don't need my help just to kill dwarves. I need assistance. Well, right now, if because they combined the two because of the time walking, so if you get one, you get both. You automatically have both mounts. But or, I have. Yeah, you already have. Yeah, you should already have both of them now. What? Yeah, check in your. Oh, oh man. Oh my. Are, are you we sure you guys play World of Warcraft? I, I swear I, think that's I like do. Three or four things that you guys just oh, learned today. I swear. To oh, girls all excited, he found out he has a new mount. Oh my I'm, god. I literally ride, ride. only play to make gold and kill stuff. <laughs> I am riding her right now, boys. All right, so it's a girl's really excited, and I do see that he's on World of Warcraft right now, so that is <laughs> proof that he's doing that. All right, so we have Razor Scale, uh, Nefarian, and Garage. Um, while I do love Razor Scale's uh, model, I think positioning in the raid was no big deal. I kind of felt like she was out of the way, storyline wise, meh. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop her right now. Although great model, uh, Garage and Nefarian, both amazing. Amazing tunes, or amazing bosses. Uh, Nefarian, I really like that he brought in the phases, or he was at least one of the very early examples he, of he phasing. had the best mechanic in the game. He would teleport all the rogues in front of him and then deep breath. Because yeah. who doesn't like rogues? Yeah, well, that's yeah. Seriously, especially if they're gnomes. The big thing with Nefarian too is he turned into a dragon, and in those earlier days. When World of Warcraft was just this fantasy game, Dragons was the antithesis of fantasy, so it was great. Garrosh, what I liked about him is he was a faction leader turned bad. Everybody was hunting him down. It was a united front between the real horde, what you know, everybody calls the real horde, and the alliance uh, going after him. The reason I'm gonna give this to Nefarian is because I feel like Nefarian's story was, it was a good story, just like Garrosh's. But I think the mechanics are perfect on him. And I think the mechanics on Garage, one thing I could not stand is that his health dropped to zero, filled back up, dropped to zero, filled back up. And that was because it was before the first big stat squish and the numbers got too out of control for um, the engine to handle. So they actually had to break it a little bit and make it to where you kept bringing them back down to zero. And he, So I felt like when I was playing that fight, to me it felt like uh, I could really see through the development on this. I could really... It broke it broke that illusion that you're inside this world to me. So I'm gonna go ahead and give this one to Nefarian, but Garrosh is a solid one. It's just I felt like it always pulled me out of the story whenever he was in there. I think it's well deserved. Yeah. Alright, so we've got uh Lich King Yox and Nefarian. We're going into our number four. And uh Derek, start us off with your number four. My number four, which I didn't have a whole lot of experience with personally, would probably be classic Ragnaros. Okay. That's a good um, one. Yeah. What do you want to say about 
Um, Classic Ragnaros, the only reason I chose him, like I said, I don't have experience with him personally, I didn't play in vanilla, but for him to be the very first raid boss, he was an opening into a world that we all enjoy and have enjoyed for 14, 15 years now. Yeah. And if it wasn't for him being so successful, then there's a good chance that this game would have died alongside all the other MMOs that come out today from not having very good in-game content. Seems like everything new that comes out, um, you go and you do the leveling. The leveling's really fun. They have class fantasy that's really good. You get to max level and you're standing there with, you know, your hand and your pants. Like, you have nothing to do. Yeah. So, WoW could have been that exact same experience if it wasn't for Ragnaros being as fun and as engaging, bringing everyone together at 40 man raids, um, needing different classes with different roles, being difficult. Um, if the game just didn't have that, then we might not even have the game that we play today. That is a huge argument for Ragnaros. It's going to be a tough one to beat, guys. So, to girl, let's see what you got. <laughs> and, let's get a big character that's lore changing. Now, he keep putting in these like side guys. Let's see. I told you. I was For his number four pick, he picks Elevator Boss from End Forest. Uh, you know what? Most deaths. That's a tough one. All right, go for it, to girl. Loot ship. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna be cool. I don't know. I want to be silly in this one, and I thought I had fun with these bosses. Yeah, Ragnaros. Like honestly, yeah, you you win. I'll tell you right now, Mac, you win on that one. But loot ship was just fun experience for Death Alliance. Mac doesn't know because he didn't suffer all these, uh, wipes and like poor uh, Mac <laughs> missed out. Yeah, I, I didn't know. suffer I making a deal. You're I got right. four guys. We need again. <laughs> you remember TLV? We brought you in the heel. That was enough suffering. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I know. But that was that was. Uh, God, yeah. It the the hard part about loose ship. It was such an easy fight, and it was just so hard for us because it was we were literally made a guild. I and got in there, you know. So it was pretty it was crazy. A, yeah, it was a fun. It was a little fun fight, you know. Yeah. I picked it. Two ships doing battle, and you're jumping. Seeing the jumping. That was uh, a good one. Yeah, just jumping over, trying to do some battle, do some damage, and then come back. And I mained Tagura, my hunter, uh, at the time, so it was, it was pretty fun. That's yeah. why I, honestly, that's why I picked it. I, I, don't, I really don't care if I you now win. I'm just prepping. Fun. All right, that's good choice. Good choice. <laughs> All right, Tabby, what do you got for yours? For your number four? Um, Garrosh. Garrosh, all right. All right, bring back Garrosh. That's solid. Uh, all right, so he sh he shows us what happens when you get corrupted by an old god. You know, you get to see the promises of the future, the visions that drove him to insanity. And it was also a big turning port for Thrall's character, because I think this is when he goes through that hellbent revenge like Ark, and now the elements don't listen to him, so we lost the best war chief because True. Droll has some uh, emotional problems here with his boyfriend Garrosh. So yeah, that the hard part about leaning on the Thrall thing, because that tugs at my heartstrings, still best war chief ever, is that was done in the, which is silly that they just used it there, but it was done in the st the quest line. Out in the Grand in uh, in Warlords of Draenor, which I felt like what a waste of a huge character like Garrosh. So, but yeah, I, I do see what you're saying there. All right, so we have Ragnaros the original, we have Loot Ship, <laughs> and we have Garrosh. So, let me first I'll get Loot Ship out the way real quick because I do want to say a few words on that, but that's not gonna win. Um, it was a cool fight, and the fact that it was Horde versus Alliance is always nice. And the idea of two ships kind of battling, so there's two ships battling each other is always awesome like pirates but then these two are flying up an icy castle and they're teleporting onto each other's ships and you had to literally fight on the enemy ships and board it so while i'm not going to include this fight i do want to say that and it and it's still to this day about 10 years later i think um eight years later it is still brought up all the time whenever we're talking about our old guild so that shows how much of an impression that fight did on us so personally it has a huge place in my heart but not Top five bosses in wild level, so but props to loot ship. You don't even call it by the real name. What is the real name? Yeah, you told me the real name. I don't know gun, what it is. Gunship gunship battle? Gunship battle. So 
<clears throat> not terribly memorable, obviously. So we have Grosh and, and Ragnaros. I think on this one, my argument for Grosh, again, is the fact that it felt like it was very mechanic-breaking. Um, it was a completion of a really good storyline, though, and I think we may... I mean, hopefully not. Hopefully the Blizzard developers are not so lazy. But we may be getting a, replete, or a repeat of that storyline, currently with Sylvanas. But I think that this one has to go to Ragnaros, because... He was he was the trailblazer. He's the reason that raiding exists. And Derek brought up a good point that if this boss did not capture everybody and, and really made them focus on progressing their selves, become better people, and putting the time in and getting hooked on this game, then we would not have had any other boss that we're talking about right now. And I really enjoyed one aspect of this fight was where you had to kill the other bosses to unlock him. And I remember you had to go kill those dudes that were like summoning him up on the top cliff and it was such a nuisance but you had to get it done to un unlock him and just that order of things it was like way of presenting bosses to you but it actually created a story in the way they did that so I feel like that was I, a good I also one. want to add that uh, his cataclysm fight was pretty good too he grew legs and then there was meatballs everywhere yeah if I were actually to pick my favorite fight of, the, of these two like because I had Ragnaros in my honorable mentions but it was the Firelands one from uh, Cataclysm. I did like that one best, but this one is a very important one. Like I said, I didn't actually get to fight that Ragnaros, but I feel like he has a lot of meaning to at least be in the mentions. Yeah, definitely. Did you fight him in the 10-year anniversary? Yeah, I did. I did actually fight him. Then. That was a lot of fun. I remember repeating that a lot. Of course, collecting all those pets because gold making is number one, but it was a, it was a lot of fun. Right. I, I enjoyed that a lot, so... All right, and then last but not least, guys, this is it. Put every bit of effort you got into this one. Get your name on this list. What is your number five? We'll start with – we'll go back to Daniel. Daniel, what's your number five? Uh, my number five is uh, Hans and Franz. I'm, I'm going to put that. Number five, Hans and Franz. <laughs> <laughs> Are you serious? He said get your name on the list. I'm <laughs> you. Cap, you remember those memories, right? Pitch it to me, baby. Pitch it to me. Try to sell me on Hans and Franz. I love that I fight, know. but it's explain a, to me why. It's a fun, uh, a fun fight. Like, you got to <laughs> dodge a lot of shit. And... <laughs> um, okay, yeah, that was a real fun fight. It did it's have a lot of fun mechanics. It. Yeah. it was just like, it was just stupid easy. You say yeah, that, but we got stuck on that boss hard. I know, because people were garbage. And like, when, like the tank. Who do we have as a tank? I forgot. Me and Squeaks. <laughs> Literally two people from this podcast. <laughs> I'm pretty sure we're going to have to do this over again with top five memorable, memorable fights that have nothing to do with lore. Because I know. You told me this is supposed to be lore and mechanics, so I was trying really hard to argue both. Look, and none of his nonsense has made the list except for Lich King, because that was a good one. But I, That's all I cared about. <laughs> I'll just put, okay, I had Yogg. But then Yager made it on the list. Why yeah. would I even try to fight That's him? true. Don't feel bad for him. He does this every week. We're the new one, so he sucks. God damn it. All right. Well, if we're going to talk about the, our best memory in World of Warcraft, was my very like big raid experience was Zarth 3D. So I never did the Zarth regular fight. And my husband's like, yeah, just dodge the waves. And I was like, what? And the next thing I know, there's waves of lava, dragons, elementals, and our DK tank died in two hits <laughs> and i was just crying because i didn't know what to do we definitely have to have boom on another one of these episodes richard because he has got so much i could ask him about a certain mechanic from any random boss in this game and he's going to pull it right out of the hat and just tell me exactly what the mechanic is probably tell me the percentages of damage it'll do to me he knows no, way I... too much God. that's because i tell him everything oh uh, <laughs> the encyclopedia behind the man all right so we have Hans and franz from Tagoro. Uh, what do you want to be your, uh, yeah, we'll go ahead, Tabby, go ahead and tell us your number five. Well, I didn't name him originally, but I'm going to do this one just for honoring my husband. That he really wanted to see General Nazgrim on the top five <laughs> list because we were with him since the beginning of Cataclysm, since before then, questing, and he has the greatest line in the game, buy Thrall's balls. They're everywhere. And then to top Props? it off, only one person can save us from the mighty General Nazgrim, and that is the mighty Ganon. <laughs> from so many years of us banking him over and over in the dreaded pub of Ogremar, he says, I forgive you guys, and I am your salvation, and I, Ganon, will save you. 
So I'll give you props on that so hard because of the Ganon call out. Uh, remember the guild on uh, our old server Nerzul, Ganon Gankers, and I know I used to act out, I don't know if you guys remember this, back in Ventrilo, back in Vent, I used to act out my, sl- hey guys, I just found a, a uh, an assassin in Orgrimmar, and it would slowly act out my killing of Ganon and how much effort I had put into it, so. Oh yeah, I remember that. Yeah. So seeing <laughs> it, I would just like randomly stop you guys, like, guys, 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 there's somebody in Orgrimmar, we gotta take him out, and then I would like slowly take him out. So seeing him come in and help us fight was a really cool way, and it brought the idea of you actually raiding Orgrimmar, not some distant castle or a fortress you're actually attacking your own home he brought that in and really reminded you that because it's like here's ganon this boy i've been seeing left and right drinking his his memories away he's actually here to fight nazgrim who also has been in our lives this entire time so that was actually out of nowhere that was a really good one though all right didn't you troll one of us when he got buffed and you can't actually kill him and he's like would one jump <laughs> i trolled <laughs> i trolled cheddar bob with that one yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's he, who we always would troll for shit. Yeah, that would be Cheddar Bob or stuff. Uh, all right, Derek, let's hear your number five. My number five would have to be someone that's not on my previous list. Um, but probably Onyxia. Oh, that's such a good fight. And I have. All right, I, I will go into details on that during my judgment. So um, we have Hans and Franz. It's not going to make it to Grimm. I'm just going to give you a spoiler alert. <laughs> General Nazgrim and then Anixia. All right, so Hans and Franz is a great fight, and I remember enjoying it a lot, and it's got really fun mechanics and everything like that, but I just don't feel like it deserves to be on this top five list of insanely good characters we have so far. So I'm going to go ahead and have them sit down. And then we have Anixia and General Nazgrim. So Anixia, now to me, this is the first raid fight of Vanilla because this is the first one I actually went out and, and seeked and, and it had the mount and everything like that. <clears throat> they re-released it at one point during Wrath. It was such an epic fight. And the reason I think a lot of people who are newer to the game went out and, and sought out this fight is because there's a YouTube video of a, of a raid leader that is... Possibly the funniest raid leading YouTube videos ever. Everybody st- still yells out more dots, and uh, and so I think that that has really uh, put itself on our community, on our culture. Is is that fight and and the and the YouTube video on it? Um, there are many YouTube videos that that we all remember. Everybody remembers Leroy Jenkins and stuff like that. Uh, a lot of streamers and stuff like that. And so this was my first foray into that idea of watching somebody else play video games and enjoying it. So that has a special part to me. General Nazgrim was amazing because he was this horde leader that we looked up to and followed this whole time. And then when he actually stays with Garrosh, it tells you that like, hey, this is not a black and white fight. A lot of people that, you know, you're not associated with, but sure. But but a lot of people, like if, if players were real and stuff like that, and you would have friends that would leave and join Garrosh because they felt he was correct and you felt like you were correct. So you guys were literally splitting the horde at the seams and stuff like that so and then of course when gammon came in it, it, it like i said earlier reminded you that this fight is taking place in your home this is some guy that you've seen every single day in your home and he's helping you fight so real props to general nazgrim but this is our last spot and but but i i got up to say one last thing because this, this, this away. final decision basically is battle for azeroth right here if you pick anixia you're you're voting for the alliance because she was <laughs> in charge of Stormwind City and Vanilla Wow. So, but if you pick Nazgrim, you are rooting for the Horde. So, what is it going to be to have? I don't like Nazgrim's version of the Horde. <laughs> so that's I like the honorable Horde, and Nazgrim went with somebody who was basically an orc but racist. Nazgrim, no, Nazgrim was being honorable. We betrayed the War Chief. Hashtag Garrosh did nothing wrong. Oh God! Please don't fire that up again. We don't need that hashtag back in our lives. We need the Sylvanas to nothing wrong one right now. I like the last ditch effort for Nazgrim, but I'm gonna have to go with Anixia. She made too much of an impact on World of Warcraft as a whole, and personally brought me into the idea of watching streamers and things like that. And we already look. Sylvanas did nothing wrong. The hashtag is already trending in Discord. That's amazing. All right, guys. So we have our list, and let me go ahead and go over it again for the listeners. We have our number one being the Lich King, great fight. Yogg-Saron's our number two, Nefarian three, four was Ragnaros, and number five was Anixia. 
Um, I'm pretty sure that three of these bosses I farm pretty regularly for a mount or a pet. So <laughs> uh, that is that is great to see them on this top five list. Anything else you got? Any honorable mentions you guys want to throw out before we close this up? If you got some, one thing I want to throw out, I'm going to throw out Putricide. That was the first time I realized that I love raiding because the way that Vent blew up after Putricide died, I was like, okay, I'm in this forever. This is how I'm going to play video games from here on out. I'm going to throw out Putricide also, but it's because that's whenever I realized I hated raiding. <laughs> okay. We had different different looks at that one. All right. Anybody else want anything else in there? I'm going to throw out Hans and Franz because, uh, <laughs> oh, oh my God. God. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a fight. Shocker! <laughs> it's so great. It was a good fight. Though. It was a good I, fight. It was a fun fight, and I like the rod face and then the festive cat part. And then you got, what was it, Lucky, the two dogs? Uh, yeah, like, they dropped the, the Lucky charm. <laughs> for precious. Precious Ribbon. Yeah, that's it, yeah, Precious that Ribbon. Was funny. That that's was always a, a funny little room, and then it got really annoying after a while because of all the wipes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's I true. Wanna, I want to honorable mention uh, Illidan. Oh, very good honorable mention, yeah. He was in my original list, but yeah. I, I think he should have been towards the top and not number five. So yeah. I repeat with Oni. Uh, Illidan is awesome, and a lot of us are familiar with farming him for his blades, and I think Legion brought him back in a really good way when we got to see his point of view during that fight. So that was kind of nice to be able to see that. That was cool. And uh, my second honorable mention was... Um... The boss of dialogue himself, Mr. Merely a Setback, Kalthas. Oh my god, yeah, I'm so tired of farming him just because I'm tired of hearing his voice. There's like a solid minute you have to wait while he's freaking out, and then you can the attack again. Says, uh, don't forget Goldan. Yeah, alright, so we have a shout out from a fan, uh, Goldan from Nighthold, which I think is my favorite raid from Legion. So, uh, yeah, I think so. Doris was better. You think so? Tenfold. Oh, yeah. And Taurus was very good. I mean, I think Taurus was being compared to Tumas Argarius, which was like the worst raid in a long time. I'm just turning, I'm just turning into top five raids because no. I'm going to throw Throne of Thunder into this. That's, that's, for, the, that's for the next expansion. <laughs> we'll wait on that one. All right, guys. Uh, I want to throw out another thank you to you guys very much for joining us. I know that uh, this is a tough one over Discord. And appreciate you guys being here. And then also to remind the fans, please hit us up on all the social medias. You guys know where we're at. It'll be in the tag at the end of this. And we have those new shirts. We have the squeaky shirt and we have a new logo shirt. And we'll be making a new squeak shirt. Uh, we're going to do a Joe shirt and Will Will. I'm going to start working on a Taguro shirt. I don't know what will be on it, but we'll get that made too. Hans and Franz. It'll probably say yeah, something yeah. about Hans and Franz. Oh, that's a good idea. Hans, Hans and Franz for like life. Shaman totem net with a crossbow next yeah. to it. Crossbow. For squeaks, I'm gonna do something. I, mean, I want to do it. the second one's gonna have Princess Tiana on there, so I'm excited about doing that. I gotta get around Disney's for, like copyrights. For squeaks, it should be a a, a panda, who uh, master tank, and be like, I'm a bad badass tank <laughs> with with his back turned to the boss. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be listening. Oh God! All right, guys. So that's it for us. Very uh, thank you very much for listening, and talk to you guys later. Thanks for listening to the top five. You can find us all over social media. We're on Facebook, at the Top 5 Podcast. On Twitter, at the Top 5 Cast. We've got a website, thetop5podcast.com. We've got Patreon and Redbubble. We'll have uh, those in the description. If you have any suggestions, hit us up on one of the social medias. Please give us a good rating on iTunes. We appreciate it. Thank you so much. See you later.